Today, it's all about light guns, a little pew 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 action on the Sega Saturn as we get this thing kicked off do the Sega Saturn light gun buying guide in the comments section below. Let us know what your favorite light gun game of all time is. It doesn't yes. have to be on the Sega Saturn. We love this topic. We love this genre of games. It's going to be a fun episode. And this episode has been an episode in the works for a while because yeah. we wanted to play all the games. We wanted to experience it. And light gun games on the Saturn were new to us. So this has been such a fun journey. There's a lot of fantastic games and a lot of awesome accessories and stuff like that. There are some games that aren't very good, but we're going to talk about yeah. everything. And what's cool about this episode if you've been following the channel for a while, we've done these before, but in today's episode, we're going to cover not only North American games, we're going to cover Japanese games, and yeah. we're going to cover Power Region games. We're going to cover every single light gun game for the Saturn, no matter what area it was released in. Yep. So let's freaking get into it. Yeah, so this buying guide is for folks that want to play original hardware. Yes. So let's start off by saying that, you know, there could be people watching this like, well, I could just emulate it with my Sinden light gun on my PC. That's fine. We yeah. understand that. This is a collector's guide for people that want to play on original hardware. So to be able to do that, this is a traditional light gun. The first thing you have to have is a CRT TV. Is a CRT TV, which I know a lot of people don't want to have, but it's the only way you're going to be able to get this experience because it doesn't work on traditional yeah. modern TVs. Obviously, you can get the Sindans and you can do all this other stuff, but if you want to play real, we have two CRTs in the game room and it looks and plays fantastic. Calibration, it just feels like you're at the arcade, but at home. It does. It's a great at-home experience. It's a true light gun experience where like the Wii and the PS3, they serve well for rail shooters and light gun games, but it is more more of like point and click. You're not truly like shooting. Yes. And, and this captures it very, very well. And, and the guns work exceptional. We'll get into the guns in a little bit, but you have to have a tube TV. Yes, so you start with that, and then what you need next, obviously you need a console. You, ne you need a Sega freaking Saturn. These things are kind of expensive, but you can get bundles on eBay. You can get a console for 100 to 200 yep. bucks, but you can find bundles, and if you look and you're patient, you can probably find light gun bundles. You get a console, guns, and some games, which yeah. is a fantastic deal. And, you know, if you want to get a console and then just mod it, that's also a great option. That's, that's going to save you a ton of money on the games. So if you do mod it, I think it's like the, the starts with an F. I can't remember the name, but it, it runs the SD card and yep. you can put games on it that way. Make sure you don't HDMI mod the console. Though. Then because it won't work, if yeah. you do that, um, then you're defeating the purpose of being able to hook up to a CRT TV. <laughs> but modded consoles do work. If you go with a stock console and you're going to be getting the games, you're going to want to get yourself um, an action replay card. Because yes. as Robert already alluded to, there's a lot of games that were not released in North America that are going to be in this buying guide list that we need to talk about. But you're not going to be playing on your North American console if that's what you get unless you have an action replay. An action replay is a great way to like kind of jailbreak your system if it will but it yeah. makes it so it's region free yep. and that's fantastic because it's super cheap and you just plug it in. We always have one ready to go and it's just ready to go. So once you get the console, once you get the CRT then you need the freaking light guns. Yep. Maybe these are awesome. These are the official Virtual. Sega virtual guns yep. and these are fantastic we have the japanese ones because i think they look the best in japan they release black ones and yep. these are freaking beautiful they released the virtual guns in europe and they're blue and then in america they're kind of red and orangish i love the black it yeah. looks sleek yeah for sure and you can get these for about 40 to 50 bucks a piece you can also find bundles and stuff if you want to get cheaper but these guns work amazing you just plug them straight into the front of your console and they work sometimes you don't even have to calibrate it just works great. yeah i think right before you filmed you found a bundle on ebay to import from japan Pan that has virtual cop one and two and two guns for like 89.99 yeah, not that, bad that's a pretty dang good deal yeah so once you get all that then you gotta start looking into the games yep and this is gonna be the most of the episode because there's so many games so let's jump into the games yeah Warning, the gameplay you're gonna see throughout the remainder of this video is captured by two idiots. But if flashing lights really mess with you and you're prone to seizures and stuff, fuck off. Start off with the three games that I think people probably mostly have heard of yes. for the Sega Saturn in the realm of light gun games. And that would be Virtual Cop 1 and 2, obviously we already mentioned it, and House of the Dead. Yes, so we'll start off with the first Virtual Cop. This game is pretty good. It feels just like the arcades. It looks great, but I will say I like Virtual Cop 2 better because it's a faster paced game, but Virtual Cop 1 is incredible. On the screen, we'll have prices for the different regions. If it's available in all three regions, if it's only available in certain areas, you know, we'll have the prices there. And if you live in the power regions, you can also get the 
this game for your PAL PS2, but in America, it's only for the Saturn. These games just play fantastic. They were optimized for the Virtua Gun, I feel like. They play so good. This gun, we already talked about it, but it, it is so accurate in yeah. most of these games. A lot of the games, you don't even need to calibrate this thing. Virtual Cop, it just it just works so good. So on price charting, this game in the US area is almost 40 bucks, but if you wanna get a cheaper version that's still a US version, you can get it on the Sega Saturn 3 game pack, yeah. which is way cheaper, that's about 30 bucks, and you get Virtual Cop, Virtual Fighter, and Daytona USA, yep. which is a badass bundle, cheaper, and you get three games. So that's that's a way to go too. I think towards the back end of the Saturn's life cycle, that was the pack-in game. Yes, so, for, for so a lot you of can get consoles. it for free. Yeah, yeah. And then the next game is Virtual Cop 2. This is one of my favorite games on the Sega Saturn for Lycan games. This game is phenomenal. Plays just like the first one, but it's faster paced. It's awesome. And if you don't have a Saturn, but you want to play this, it's available on the Sega Dreamcast Smash Pack. Yep. So that's a way to play on your Dreamcast if you have light guns for your Dreamcast. So this game is incredible. Yeah, House of the Dead, another one that I think a lot of people have heard of. Love the game, but this is, I, I can't rave about it on the Saturn. It's good enough, but it's not, it's kind of a poor arcade it's, port is it's, what I'm getting at. We love House of the Dead so much. House of the Dead is what started the channel. Yeah. But this game is poor. This game is rough, and it, it's also very expensive if you want to get a U.S. copy of this CIB. Yeah. It's like over 400 bucks. Yeah. Not worth it because this game, it runs like ass. Yeah. It sucks because it's the only way to play this at home legally. Like yeah. Besides modding your consoles, I know they just released the remake for modern consoles, but that sucks too. It's, it yeah. looks better, but it's not a Lycan game. Yeah, I, I think it's fun to play on the Saturn because I like House of the Dead so much, but that's coming from a hardcore House of the Dead fan that I'm giving this game a lot of grace, but it, it, it's just not as good as it should have been. I don't understand why. A game we didn't get in the US, Chaos Control. Chaos Control. Yeah. This game was only released in the PAL regions and then in Japan. This game is available on Saturn and CDI. I've never played a CDI, so I don't know how it plays on that. But on Saturn, this game is pretty cool. It's kind of weird because you're like in a plane, so it's like an on rails, but you're you're flying, you know. So that's pretty cool. LA Machine Guns vibe, not as good. Not as good yeah. as LA Machine Guns, but you get that similar vibe of it. Instead of a gun, you're like shooting a laser, but yeah. it can overheat, so you don't have to reload. You just gotta watch out for your overheat measure. This game is fun. But it also kind of reminds me of like Star Wars in a little bit. Like this game could have been a Star Wars Lycan game and it would have done phenomenal. Yeah. Because there's areas like the last level, it feels like you're on the Death Star. It feels like you're doing a Death Star mission, yeah. but it's not the, the Death Star. So that's kind of frustrating. Another unique thing about this game too. Is that the pilot's drunk in it. Yes, <laughs> you're, you're swerving. <laughs> that's a really unique thing that I forgot to mention. I forgot to mention because he doesn't want you to know because yeah. he doesn't want to lose his license, but yeah. he is. But what's really cool too about this game is towards the end, there's forking paths. Yeah. So you, you got to pick your path. And if you pick the wrong path, you take a hit and then you got to start that area over. So we were super close to beating yeah. <laughs> but then we picked the wrong path yeah. multiple times and then died. Yeah. Yep. So that sucks because how are you supposed to know? Yeah, you got to remember, dude. It's one of those things that you play the game and, and it sounds like you're cussing in the room, but you're just saying, Fork and pass! Fork and pass! Fork and pass! <laughs> this game is really cool. It's fun if you like liking games, but it's definitely not one of the best ones on the Saturn, but it's still it's still playable. playable. Yeah, it's, it's still, playable. Still playable and it, like, it looks great. Another uh, game came out in PAL regions, not in Japan, I don't believe, but in the US. And you've probably heard of this on the channel if you've watched, because um, it's also on the PlayStation 1, a Konami game called Crypt Killer, Crypt which Killer. is pretty damn good. This game is awesome. It's available on PS1 and Saturn. There's going to be a few games that are available on both, and I think the Saturn versions of this game and the two other ones we're going to talk about just look a little bit better than the PS1 version. I think it just looks a little bit more crispy. We'll have gameplay on the screen right now showing, but they both play great. This game is awesome. If you mm -hmm. like over-the-top ridiculousness, it's a Konami game, yep. and you're just going through, and it's just kind of a longer game because there's, there's, there's six worlds. Six worlds yeah. with three areas in each world but when you beat a world you continue with how many healths you have from the product mm -hmm. so it's a hard game to beat yep. you're going to be pretty dialed in the gameplay itself was kind of easy except when you get to the boss fights yeah then it gets hard yep. but it's a fun game i yep. like i like this game a lot i liked it when we did our ps1 buying guide episode and i liked it here it's just it's just so fun it's a good one okay now we're going to dive into a little bit of uh there's some other good games coming but there's a couple turds in the punch bowl that we got to talk about <laughs> death crimson i was not super into this game no. it, it's a japan only yes, release this i is, believe this is only available in japan but like we mentioned if you get an action replay you can import this game for cheap nope 
and by cheap I mean this game's 90 bucks so not <laughs> cheap <laughs> um, but it's the only way you can play it and you can play it in, in North America it's only a one player game which sucks yep. so that was automatically a ding because we we're a co-op channel and then this game just is boring it is <laughs> it looks so like trash it looks like <laughs> trash it plays like trash and it just is boring and slow it just sucks like yeah this game is bad it's <laughs> but it's but it's available you, it's a like yeah. a game you know it's 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 not good it kind of reminds me a little this i don't ever want to compare them but it kind of reminds me of virtual copy because there is certain areas where like the square you know, like in Virtual Cop, like the yeah, circle? I know what you're saying. It does this square. I don't want to compare it to Virtual yeah, Cop. Because I was going to say, yeah, it, it reminds me of Virtual Cop 2 and the fact that it's, it's, uh, it, Virtual Cop's so good, this is so Yeah, bad. that's the, because it has like that no, funny thing saying, with yeah. points and stuff. It's, it, it's bad. But if you don't want to play it on the Saturn, it is available on other consoles, which is freaking wild. Yeah, the next game, too, I wish I could say it was awesome uh so it's like three games in one and it's the die hard trilogy and this is also available on the playstation one yep on both consoles this game runs like absolute <laughs> dog shit i think the ps1 one smells a little less bad yes. than the other the saturn I, pile of dog shit i think the saturn version is the worst version of this game this is a fox game i will say it is cool that it come it comes with three games and only the second die hard game is the lycan game yep so the first one is kind of a third person shooter and i think the third one is a different style of game so you you do get three games in one. Yeah. But if you're getting this for a Lycan game, don't. Because, <laughs> dude, this game runs worse than Death Crimson. This game is... <laughs> it's, it's bad. It, it looks terrible. It plays terrible. It's also only a one-player game. And when we were playing it, dude, I was playing this one player getting string cap and I was in like the first area and I shot this guy like 40 times and he just kept shooting back <laughs> and then eventually he died and then it moved on. I was like, this sucks. Like, I'm yeah. hitting him dead on. Yeah. This game is rough dude bad I, I don't ever complain about frame rate unless it's really bad this has bad frame rate it, yeah. it is this game sucks yeah it's a stuttering do mess. not get this on the saturn <laughs> couple of the better light gun games on the console are from midway um you know take you gotta take a minute here to shout out all the cool shit midway was oh, doing yeah. during this time frame we're in the heart of you know the mid 90s we got nba jam we got Mortal Kombat. We got these light gun games that are so good in the arcade and the home ports are really good as well. And we'll start with the first one, Maximum Force. Maximum Force. This game is also available on PlayStation and the Sega Saturn. But I will say, just like I talked about Crypt Killer, this game just looks a little bit better on the Saturn. They both play and work the same. It just looks crispier on the Saturn, I think. See, I think the same thing because the PlayStation like almost zooms in a little a bit. A little bit. Because this game and Air 51 it has like a border around it yes it helps the visual it, it just really does um, but anyway plays fantastic two-player co-op yeah this, this it's a live a, action type of graphics dude, and i love that it, shit it is so awesome mm -hmm. what's what's so wild is this is like one of the better ones on the saturn and this was only released in pal in the united states japan didn't even get this japan got all the shitty ones like yeah. this and then we got maximum force but this game is amazing it's so fun dude there are weird like mini games too when you get to certain point thresholds like you'll be playing and then it will just all of a sudden cut to a mini game yeah the first time you play you're like what the heck's going on yeah. but this game is incredible if you like area 51 this is a precursor to that same type of game i love it this is this is a fantastic game we sat down when we were getting screen cap and we beat it yeah it's, it's so good it, it's it's fun but speaking of the devil the <laughs> other uh game worth talking about is area 51 i think most folks who have been in arcades have probably seen maximum force and Area 51, Area 51 or for sure Area yeah. 51. It is the gabagool, it's the coup de yeah. tat. It is so damn good. The live action graphics are fantastic. The team that you're with, the cop in the blue that's gonna run across the screen and you're gonna shoot him a hundred times, yes. you're gonna be pissed, you're gonna be cussing, you're gonna be laughing. It's everything a light gun game Area 51 is one of my favorite light gun games just in general, besides House of the Dead, but this port of it from the arcades is incredible. Yeah. Like I mentioned with the other ones, it's a little bit crispier on the Saturn compared to the PS1 version, but they both play great. This game is incredible, and I love that there's power-ups for your gun. You can upgrade it to a shotgun and then upgrade it to an auto shotgun, and the auto shotgun is OP. Yeah. But if you take one hit, you lose it all. 
It is such a fan. And what's really cool about Area 51, and I've never experienced it because I don't even know how, but there are hidden rooms. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know at. how to do it. That's how hidden they are. Yeah, but they're so <laughs> hidden, but that's so super cool. This game is fantastic. You're literally going around Area 51 base shooting aliens. Yeah. This is, it's, dude, it's so it, fun. It's a joy to play. The gun works incredible with it. Yeah. I also think, you know, Robert mentioned the visuals. I think this game runs a little smoother on the Saturn too. There's yes. a lot of uh, mid-level loading sections on the PS1. It's not a game changer. If you could only play it, you know, on like you only have a PS1, not it's worth playing regardless. It plays good on both. But overall, typically games that are on Saturn and PS1 run a little bit better on the yes. PS1. Not always though. And this is one of those cases where I do think this game is better on the Saturn. I think it's better on the Saturn, but I still like and enjoy on the PS1. We have yeah. it both ways and it's fantastic. I will say if you're playing with the virtual gun, this only has two buttons. It has a start and a trigger. There's no grenade button because this will pause the game. So in Area 51 on the Saturn, your grenade pops down and you have to shoot it. In other, like I think the PS1 one, there's a grenade button because there's other buttons on the gun. That's a little different, yeah. but it still plays great. And once you get used to that, it's fine. Yep, it, it's a fantastic freaking game. Do you like hot fudge sundaes? Now let's move on to a Japanese only game. And this game is really freaking cool. <laughs> For a little bit. <laughs> it starts off real. Do the intro video. Okay, so let me just tell the name of it. The name of this game is Mechanical Violator Hakater The Last Judgment. Yeah. So a long name. And he's got cool boots. He's got the, the intro to this is badass. Yeah. It does. This feels like a Japanese Terminator game. It's so cool. Well, I think it's based off a TV show or a movie. I think it's a, it's a movie that's with the same title. Apparently, this game takes place 10 years after the movie, so it's not just a ripoff of the movie. Uh, so if you like the movie, but also it's in Japanese. So there's a lot of cutscenes and a lot of story that if you don't speak Japanese, good luck. Yeah. <laughs> we don't even know what's happening. No, because and then sometimes like you will like. <laughs> so there is like on when when you're doing the like on stuff, it's fun and it's badass. Yeah. But then there's so much story and so much clicking around, and then you gotta walk around and uh, figure out. And I don't speak Japanese, so I'm like, what am I doing? Yeah. I'm sure in Japan this game is awesome. But for someone that doesn't speak Japanese, I was like, can we just well, get on with it? Like, lightning games shouldn't be too story driven. I yeah, like. and there's way too much walking around and looking around in this. Yeah. I, I really feel like it breaks up the pacing. And and this 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 guy, whatever his name is, the the protagonist. The violator. The violator. <laughs> he is a badass. And he has like three different shooting types, you know, like a standard shot, like a almost he has like four. a grenade or he, yeah. yeah, he has four. He has a, a normal, a rapid, a cobra, and a bazooka all in one gun. So that's pretty badass, you can switch between your shots. But the game just breaks up, the, the pacing's just bad, you know? It, it's like tons of action and then all of a sudden, you have to click or shoot these arrows to walk in direct, it's, it just gets really weird. This game should have been badass because the gun portion of the game is pretty damn good. If you speak Japanese or you live in Japan, you might really like it because you might get into the story or if you know the movie, you might get into that. But when you don't know what's going on with the story and you just want to play like on games, this yeah. game is kind of rough. I wanted to like it so much because it starts off so badass. Yeah. But then I'm just like, okay, I and get those it. boots, man. We're going to show a little clip of them right now. <laughs> those boots are made for walking. Yeah. Christopher. <laughs> Uh, unique game here, Mighty Hits. I think those of you who have played light gun games in the arcade or maybe even on the PlayStation 1 remember a game called Point Blank. Point Blank is incredible. Mighty Hits is kind of, it wants to be Point Blank. <laughs> it's the poor man's Point Blank. But it's not This point game blank. was only released in Japan and the PAL territory, so we didn't get it in North America, probably because they were like, oh, Point Blank's better. Yeah. <laughs> this game is fine. And it works, it works. It works and yeah. plays fine. And if you're into that style of Lycan game where it's head to head and mini games, you might enjoy it. But I will say the mini games just feel slower than mm -hmm. Point Blank and not as good as Point Blank. It's still fun. Ish? I, I wouldn't I wouldn't waste your money on it. No. I mean, if you had the complete setup and you had a PS1 and a Saturn, I would spend the money on Point Blank. I, I mean, mean, this game, I think, is just not one you're going to go back it's, to a ton. It's it, not, there's fun to be had. It's but. not super expensive, but yeah, I'd rather I'd rather get Point Blank on the PS1 and play it elsewhere. Mm -hmm. Just 
But if you like that style of Lycan game, you might enjoy it. And it is great, like, head to head, so if you have kids and stuff, it might be fun. Um, but now let's move on to a very unique Lycan game that was released in Japan only, and this game is incredible because it was written and directed by Hideo Kojima. Ever heard of him? You ever heard of Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. He made a light gun game called Police Knots. It's only in Japan, which sucks. It's a light gun game, but not. So it was originally, I think, a PC game, and then it got ported to other things, and then the Sega Saturn port was the last version yep. of it. So this is like the upgraded deluxe version. It has all the extra stuff in it. It does have English subtitles. It does have English, which is, which is fantastic, so you can actually understand the story. But this is more of a point-and-click adventure with a Lycan game added on to it. Yep. So, if you like point and click, wandering around, clicking on things, it's only a one player game, so the first slot has to be a controller. The second slot is the gun. Yeah. So most of the game you're playing with a controller, you're clicking around, you're learning about the story. The story is actually very intriguing because there was subtitles, so I understand what was going on. Yeah. And then when it gets to a portion where you're shooting, it's actually really fun. So it's, it's cool, and this is the only version of this game that uses the light gun compatibility. Yeah. All the other versions you just shoot with the controller. This game is cool. It's not a t typical light gun game, but it has light gun capabilities. Yeah, not typical in the sense either that it's like 11 or 12 hour beat. It's, it's a, a long game. It's because it's a, it's a uh, I think when I was reading about it, people like describe it as like a virtual novel. Yeah. Like it's like a interactive movie story. Like, you're, you're mostly just in it for the story, and it's Hideo Kojima, so he writes incredible stories. Yeah. So this game is really cool, but it's not a... You're, the gun's gonna sit for a while, and then there's a, few, <laughs> there's a few times... So it is worth mentioning, it is it is a very unique game that's badass. Well, and there, if you're a Metal Gear fan, you know, I think... If you're a true Metal Gear fan, you appreciate in the games all the little hidden nuggets, right? In, in various Metal Gear games, and... This game is no different. You know, there's a, a in the opening scene, it's like going down one of the, ci the city streets and one of the signs for a building says Solid Snake. Solid Snake. Meryl, this is where she happens. Yeah, she, the, she she started in this game and then she was readapted for Metal Gear. Yeah. So and that's badass. The, the intro music, the ting, ting, Oh, ting. it's very Metal Gear. It has that, I know that song's been used in, in Metal Gear at some point. Um, it, it's just... It's it's a really and I love cool and it's a joy to play. I love the art style and the animation and like there's cutscenes and it's like a movie. This would be a game like if I just had like a Saturday and I just turned off all the lights and I'm just like I don't want to like play a ton of video games but I want to enjoy like yeah, a, a good this, story. This would be yeah. a great thing because then you can kind of, you kind of just relax and be like oh I gotta shoot for a little bit and then relax. Yep. It's, what? Super cool. The shooting in it is dialed in. Yeah, it's, like it's when you really it. good. And that graphic, like when the gun, like you know, it shows the bullets, and then the gun kind of comes over the top, and it it looks really good, and it plays really, it's, really it well. It plays awesome, but it's it's you're mostly in it for the story. Yep. So highly recommend, but not a traditional Lycan game, if that makes sense. And then we got one more, and this game. Whoo! This is the surprise game of this episode. Yes. Would you agree? Dude, because we initially had a list and then we were going through and playing them all and Scud, the disposable assassin, was on this list and what's weird about this game is it was only released in the United States. So I was like, okay, Scud, US only, this game is probably gonna suck. <laughs> I was wrong, I'll admit it, I was wrong. This game is incredible. You know, I've read some stuff though that there was a couple places that reviewed this game bad and there's some people that really don't like this game. Why? I don't understand Maybe that. because we like ridiculous things and we like <coughs> fantastic. So this this game is based on a comic book of the same name, yeah. which is badass because the comic book was, was made by someone that's kind of famous in Hollywood, Rob Schraub, who's friends with Dan Harmon and all this stuff. So if you know what that is, I won't go into it, but this is fantastic. It's a Lycan game, one to two players. And then it's also a run and gun game. Different games. Yes. You can do one to two player run and gun or one to two player light gun. Or you don't like those two options? What about a third option? What about a single player game with two light guns? You should be a car salesman. Yeah. <laughs> what about leather interior and power windows? <laughs> the light gun game is fantastic, mm -hmm. but this is super unique because this this character in this game, he kind of reminds me of like a robotic Deadpool in a way, just because he has two pistols and he's an assassin. But he has two pistols, so they were like, if you're only one person, might as well have two pistols. So you can play this yeah. game dual welding. It gets That's, tired. It gets tired. Dude, your arms are like, oh shit. <laughs> but this this game is incredible. It is the music. Let's talk about the soundtrack. Oh, dude, it is 90s. Probably one of the best video game soundtracks I have ever heard. <laughs> It's
it's crazy because we've been on like collab videos and stuff and asked what our favorite soundtrack is and my go-to is oh it's Donkey Kong Country Action dude Verge, yeah. I think Scud even the music in game yes is so but there's like real like band music and like the intro stuff and it's like very like dirty 90s yeah and it's just I cannot recommend this game enough. It's only United States, and what's wild is for a Saturn game, this game is cheap, 45 bucks. Yeah. That's awesome, because you can get two games in one, basically. Yeah. The run and gun portion is fantastic, and then the light gun portion is fantastic. I think there's probably a lot of people that maybe played this back in the day, and they only had controllers, and they thought that that was the only way to play through the game. But yeah. the light gun part, oh, dude. because this is a light gun episode, right? The light gun part works really damn good. It's, it, it's you, you side scroll, so think about this you play through the game the side scrolling run and gun piece you're scrolling across the screen yep. right that's how the light gun game works too but you don't see your characters you're actually shooting at but the it's the same side, side scrolling yeah. thing if that makes any sense we'll obviously show some footage but the, the guns work great the pacing is great there's so much stuff you got these little kids that you're trying to not shoot to yep. free those up are, those from, are the say those are yeah. the people you got to save yeah it's and what's so funny is the main character is scud and then like if you do two player you need a second guy his name is drywall yeah and he's a different type of player yeah right? so so that's fun too so you can play through it two player and then switch and it's a different experience you yeah. know it's and even the single i was doing single player last night doing the running gun i almost beat it but it it freaking got me because the platforming is a little rough but it's so fun, and this game is just a freaking joy. And I love that when you do the run and gun single player, it's a little bit different than the than the run and gun two player, and a little bit different than the two player light gun game. So I mean, they're all kind of similar, but it's just there's more story, and like yeah. it's this game is a true gem that I had never heard of till we started doing this episode, and now it's one of my favorite games of all time. <laughs> like, like, yeah. This game like blew my mind. Yeah. It is incredible. I, I like it. I don't know how people could talk shit about it. There is a weird 90s vibe to it. It's so different than this, but I, I had this Earthworm Jim feel. A little bit, because he's like lanky yeah. and like, the way he jumps and stuff. Yeah. yeah. But incredible. Yeah. Like a game and a running gun for 45 bucks? Hell yeah. There's a few other games that incorporate the virtual gun i don't really think they're worth talking about because they're like board game -esque we, we, style we do need to there's three games that we do need to mention because they can use lycan games but they're japanese only and they're hard to play if you don't know is it one of like a dating simulator? so the first one <laughs> is i i'm not i'm gonna but butcher this daisuke <laughs> I just like you say Japanese things. I think it's called Daisuke. <laughs> is in Japan only. That sounds I good. I think. <laughs> but what's wild is you can get this game CIB for set less than seven bucks. Yeah, so well, I bet you it's great. But it's 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 a Japanese only dating simulation game. Uses that uses, so I haven't played it because I don't understand Japanese, so I don't know if I, I'd be going on bad dates all the time. Yeah, night. it'd be fun. But then there are, apparently, there are mini games where, like, there's, like, a target practice that, or, like, that uses the gun. Okay. So the gun is applicable. Oh, so you can take your date to the shooting range? I guess so. <laughs> I you can know. you can do like track and field events, you can play cards. There, I think I read like there's even a shmup portion of the game, but it's mostly a dating simulation okay. game. And you know, the the Japanese, they like making weird dating things. And I don't know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that either. I think I just made that up. I think I just left them all in there. <laughs> <laughs> but it has like uncapability, so keep, if you speak Japanese, it might be kind of cool. Um, this other game, Corpse Killer. This game is a light gun game on other consoles. But not the Saturn. But not the Sega Saturn. It's going to come up on, like, if you look for light gun games, it's going to come up, and it's going to look really cool, but it, it doesn't... So it's like a live-action movie. Yeah, it doesn't work with the guns. Yeah. So it doesn't... And You'll then, see it on list, but it, it's not a light yeah. gun game. You'll and then, also see Revolution X, the Aerosmith game. Not a light gun game on the Saturn. No, it doesn't... It, and also that, I hate that game. Yeah. I want to like it so much because it's Aerosmith, but I don't. And then the last game that uses like and capabilities, but again, haven't played it because it's Japan only. And I'm going to butcher this as well because it's, <laughs> this is one of the longest titles of a game ever. Kochira Kadesuke Kamakuri. I'll put it, it's on the screen. <laughs> I'm not going to even attempt to say the rest of it. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, you should try. It's hard. I'm not gonna try. It's it. a hard, but it's one that we didn't play. Is, is what because we're this at. is a virtual <laughs> board game that's all in Japanese that uses the light gun. So it, it'd be impossible. Yeah, like, it's yeah. A, it, we can't do it. Yeah, it's uh, so we played what we could. Yes, yeah. but if you want to play the Japanese board game, this game also is cheap. It's eight bucks for CIB copy, so not bad. But it's Japanese only. 
Wouldn't recommend those three, but there's a ton of other games I would recommend. Freaking Virtual Cop 1 and 2, you gotta pick up Scud, Area 51, Maximum yep. Force. Like the list goes on, like there are there are some duds, and we did talk about it, yeah. but there are a lot of fantastic ones where I was like, I just wanna keep playing this all day. Yeah, for sure. Um, I can't say enough good things about the gun. Yes. The way it works, how accurate the way it is. It feels. Yeah, the build is great. It's solid, it's chunky, it's got good weight to it. The games that, that use it, it performs well. The issue on any of the games that we said were maybe poor isn't the gun at all. No, the gun works great in all applications, which I think is a little bit different in the sense like when we did the PS1 buying guide, you got the justifier and you have the gun con. Both work well in their own right, but it's a little confusing as to what gun can you use where. Yeah, and then also sometimes you can use both and one kind of runs poorly. No, this is great. One gun for all the yeah. games, and that's not, it works fantastic. There are even some games where you don't, you probably should calibrate, but you don't even have to. Yeah. Like that's how accurate it is. And what's wild, you just plug it into the front and it works. Yeah. Freaking incredible. And then, so now we should probably talk about, is it worth it? Is it worth jumping into the rabbit hole of a light gun game system collecting for it for the Sega Saturn? I think absolutely. Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it's, I think it's if, a little bit of a you know jaunt because you've got to get a CRT, a console, yeah. and the guns, and then the games. But if you maybe already have a console and stuff, this is one of the best ways to play light gun games at home. Yep. True arcade ports, they feel fantastic, and a lot of the games we talked about today are home runs. Yeah, if you're going to play, that's the thing. Some people get all these bells and whistles, and then they don't set it up, they don't play it. But if you like light gun games, yep. and, and you playing these games two player is so fun i think anybody can enjoy a light gun game. yes you it's can sit down with a with a child yeah, or, or non-gamer friends yeah. they're gonna have fun with this type of stuff it's low barrier of entry but high degree of difficulty you know finding all the 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 hidden items and the ammo boxes and the the power-ups the hidden rooms yeah. <laughs> if you are a light gun fan and you are a collector i think it is worth it Again, there's going to be somebody inevitably in the comment section that says, don't you know about sending light guns and you can emulate on your PC? Yeah. Yes, we know. We know. Yeah, that's why we mentioned it at the beginning. Yes. At the top. And we understand. But if you like playing on original hardware. Oh, dude, it's incredible. And sitting back and shooting at the old tube, I highly recommend dude, this. I really want to have enough time to play through Police Knots. Yeah. Because I, I know it's not really, a, it's just kind of a movie kind of. But it's, but it, dude, it's, it's, it's such an intriguing story. And unique. And unique because I've never played a virtual game like that. I have played some some things like that, like yeah. Intel Dawn and stuff. Yeah. But this is like the 90s. This was like way before. And then you get parts where you have to grab where the gun. You, yeah, it's awesome. I mean, it's so unique. Yeah. Ah, oh, dude, it, and I, it's just so fun. A lot of these games, traditional liking games, they're short. So you can get in, get out, have everything set up. It's quick, awesome fun. Yep. Highly recommend. This is this episode has been so much fun to do research and play games on. Even the bad ones we did have fun with because we were laughing at how bad it was. Yeah. <laughs> so it was enjoyable. Highly, highly recommend. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, it's uh it's a it's a home run. They did a great job with the light gun games. The only shame in the matter is that there weren't more light gun games on the Sega Saturn. I mean, there's a decent amount. There, the there fact is. that we talked about the Japanese and the yeah. PAL region and stuff, so there's enough to scratch the itch. Yeah, like, for sure. 20, dude. But I just, man, you just wish they would have churned out a few more and because also they you did just it wish, so like, well. Some of them would be, like, I wish House of the Dead was better because you know that they could do it. Yeah, yeah. Other games did it. Yes. Why wasn't House of the Dead better? Or why wasn't this game better? Yeah. Because other ones were. Yeah. Yep. But still incredible let's talk about this beer yeah, before, before we, we go wrap it up. because yeah. uh beer reviews are back baby <laughs> <laughs> yeah let's go uh this is the overnight oats yeah. by confluence which is a brewery out of des moines iowa which is where we're from this is a bourbon barrel aged double oatmeal stat with cherry vanilla and almond and this bad boy comes in at 14.1 percent whoa so this is like one beer equaling almost four beers yeah what do you think I really, really like it. Yeah. And you know, when we poured this, when we picked it up the other day, Confluence was a brewery in our area, still is a brewery in our area. I don't know why I said was. Maybe I, I'm saying it like that because of this. They used to just be home run yes. after home run after home run. And their staples are still really good. But some of their one-off stuff over the years have been less than uh, thrilled about. And I kind of was joking with Robert before we filmed, like, Confluence needs this one, okay? Yeah. This, this needs to be good. They because I'm starting win. to lose like kind of faith in them. Damn, this is this is a really good I brew. really like this. It has really good cherry vanilla flavor. Mm -hmm. 
you get a little bit of that uh, almond in there, which helps smooth it out. Yep. It is a very smooth, easy drinker. You would never guess this beer's 14%. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> because if I went to order this at the at the bar, I'd be like, yeah, I'll have another, and then I can't stand. You know, it's like... Yeah. But it's so... Like, it's, you need another almond. <laughs> yeah. Almond. <laughs> almond me, please. It's so good. It's been... I, I really like it because I haven't had combos in a while but the last couple times I have that it's been stouts and I'm just like you're not quite there but this I was like I'm pleasantly surprised by this yeah very good flavor even the nose is good yeah I haven't had a good stout from them in a long time either I always if I go confluence with something I'm always just getting their Des Moines IPA which is a fantastic yeah, brew a by the way great brew but god damn this is, this is really this good is, this is a I'm glad we got a four pack so we got two more <laughs> well done confluence <laughs> yeah uh, cheers to that this is a fantastic beer to drink while you're freaking playing the Sega Saturn yeah playing some like gun games Oh, incredible. We've been on a Saturn kick. You know, you guys are seeing this is the second Saturn video kind of in a yeah, row yeah. that we have put out. And it has been a true joy. Thank you for hanging along for the ride for this light gun buying guide. We haven't done a light gun buying guide since June of 2022. What's it because it takes a lot of work. But, but we're we, running out of consoles to do it for. I mean, I, I mean, think we, got, we got the Dreamcast. Yep. We got the Xbox. Yeah. Well, the Xbox yeah. would be a 10 minute video. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but still. But yeah, yeah. It's, worth, it's worth talking about. We love light gun games. But... I think, man, one of my favorites was the PS1 and PS2 because of the gun con. But now I think Saturn is it's in the it's in, in the, the running for one of the best consoles for like a game. Yeah, dude, it is for sure. If it, if it was a Royal Rumble right now, I don't know who would win. Yeah, um, I, but I'm I, in love with the Saturn right now. So yeah, it could be I think the quality of Virtua Cop 1 and 2 really gives it a leg uh, to stand on. And then you know those third party ports. Man, it's you, even if you just had Virtual Cop one, two, Maximum Force, and Area Fifty One, it would be a contender oh, because they yeah. play so damn good. And there's nothing worse than playing a light gun game that runs bad, the guns don't work right, and dude, the Saturn is just uh, we're just having so much fun. We're playing having this so much fun, and I'm so glad I discovered Scud. Oh, I will never. That is the win. I'm going to be talking about that game. For the rest of my life. <laughs> like, it is. Yeah. Because I've never even heard of it. Yeah. It, maybe maybe because I'm new to the Saturn and I'm not, I don't really, like, so maybe someone did mention it, but I was like, I don't know anything about the Saturn. But now I'm like, you gotta play Scud. You gotta play Scud. Yeah, it it's so easy. So good. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's been a joy. I mean, we've been finishing evenings playing NBA Jam on it. By the way, oh, it looks, dude, we could go down. Yeah. There's another whole nother Saturn content that we're going to do, but we're going to wrap up this. If you can't tell, we're excited. We love us. Some we love us. We're turning into Sega kids, dude. Isn't that wild? Because we're Nintendo kids. I know. It's crazy. But wow. thanks for hanging out. We appreciate you tuning in, subscribing to the channel. And uh, we will catch you on the next episode of the one and only Gaming Off the Grid.